Hey, what's up guys? It's the Catalyst 47 here back with another video. So guys, for today's video, I'm going to show you guys my updated Burning Abyss deck profile for the March 2020 ban list. Or format, I guess. It's not, I mean, because the ban list itself didn't really change anything to this deck. I had already made... There are some differences compared to my last uh, build, but a lot of these changes I had already made before the ban list. So the ban list itself didn't really affect this deck that much, but... Yeah, I have made some changes and I wanted to show you guys. And what better way to do it? It's, it's like, you know, until after the balance comes out. I didn't want to put out this video before that. So, yeah, guys, let's just get right into the deck profile. All right, guys, so let's start with the build. So we got Horse, Triple Skarm. Sorry, Triple Graph. The, this is the, honestly, probably the best Burning Abyss monster in the deck. You can definitely need three of it searches out any or special summons any out any other burning abyss from your deck to the field. So it's a no-brainer, guys. Then we got triple seer. You know, I've thought about cutting this card to two on several occasions, but like I feel like whenever you do draw in your opening hand when it's at two, that only that basically means you can only search it one more time. So it doesn't and one of the things that helps this deck a lot is that it's a very um, grindy deck, so if you only have two, it's like, I feel like it it hinders your ability to grind out the game, which is one of the strong points of this deck. So that's why I'm still running it at three, even though I do not really like opening a Seer. And then the other three, we got Triple Skarm. I don't remember if in the last build I bumped this card back to three or if it was still at two, but um, a couple, couple of, uh, maybe like two months ago, when, I know I know when the first, when the December balance came out, I had this card at two, but... I decided to put it back to three, just because this card, I mean, I guess it's not that it's as necessary as before, because it's, it's not. I mean, you have three Seer, three Graph, three Tour Guide, but it's still really good to be able to maximize your chances of seeing it, so you can search whatever you need on the end phase. So, that's why I decided to bump it back up to three. And we got two Farfa. So this card, it's like, I mean, it's a good card, but I don't feel like you need three of it because it's just, um, <clears throat> it's a good interrupter, but you don't need it like every turn or something. And, and even if you do feel like you've already used it, it's in the graveyard, it's still pretty easy to recycle back with like Dante or something like that. So I don't, I didn't feel like it was as important to have three. It's a good interrupter. And I feel like two is just enough to have in the deck. Like, it's not a card you need to see in your opening hand because you can just, it's one of your targets for Beatrice. And then we got the one ofs. We got one Calcab, one Barbar, one Alec, and one Libic. So these are your one ofs, and these are just, um, you, you want different BA names because um, you can only use their effects once per turn. So if you, you don't want to open up, like, you really don't want to open up, like, Graph and Seer, like, only those two names in your hand. So it's like this gives you more options like to draw in the deck because um, drawing any of these with graph, it's like full combo. So yeah, you just want more options. Like you don't want to be limited to just like four different names in the deck. So yeah. And Libic's definitely the best one, but I still don't think you need more than one in this deck because this deck... If I was playing like the more combo version of this deck, where you're running like basically almost three of every BA of the, well, in the combo version, I would be running three Farfa, and I'd be running two Libic, and then I would just one of these three. Um, so it, it's more uh, BA uh, focused, so you have more BAs in the deck. But with this version, which is the trap version, I don't feel like you need two of Libic. You know, the other ones are more utility, like even though they're one of I mean, of course, they can still come up like Alec negates Bar Bar for uh, burning for 900 and Cow Cap bouncing, especially uh, bouncing spell or trap cards. So that's it for the BAs. I believe it's, um, I want to say it's 15. Yeah, because we got three of the four best ones. And then that's, no, sorry, three of the three best ones. That's nine. Too far for that's 11 and then the four random ones yeah that's 15. it's not like the crazy count but it's still you want a good amount of bas 
Uh, and the reason I put in more BAs is because y'all see it in a little bit. So we got three tour guide, of course, best. Um, this is like the one card combo. This is tour guide is just so good because it's you don't like with with graph you need another BA. You need two BAs in order to do the combo, but with tour guide you just need tour guide, which is what makes the card so good. And yeah, it's uh definitely I feel like a three of in the deck. I don't know if I could tell, but. These are my old T copies, guys. I got old T's now. Super, super excited about that. Um, and so basically, that's basically it for the BAs and their support. I actually cut the Rhino. I was running two Rhino before, and that's another reason why I added in a few more BAs. Because on my previous build, I was using 15, 14 BAs. So I, I added one more, uh, which was the Cow Cab. Um, just because since I knew I was going to cut the Rhinos, uh, I wanted to make sure I could have have a slightly higher chance of drawing like more BA names. So I, I cut the two Rhino just because um, it's a good card. I, I, do, I think Rhino is a very good card. But um, I also cut the Backjack, which might be a bit contra uh, might be a bit controversial for people because I am running the Trap version, and Cal uh, sorry Backjack is very good with the Trap version, but it. I know it doesn't come up often. I only run. I only ran one backjack, so it doesn't come up often where I draw it. But it does come up where I draw it, and it's like the times that I draw it, I'm just so mad because I'm just like I'm running one of this card in a forty card deck. Why am I drawing it? And when it, when I hate drawing it so much that I wanted to try to make this build as consistent as possible. And if I wasn't, if I since backjack is kind of a brick, since I wasn't gonna run backjack. That's one of the reasons why I also decided to cut the Rhino. I was like, I don't want to run the Rhino if I'm not running Backjack. So, and it, it, it's also just a good amount of normal summon. Because you have your three tool guide. I mean, Graph, you're almost always going to want a normal summon Graph. So, that's already six normal summons in the deck. Plus the Rhinos, that's eight. I felt like that was a little high. So, that's why I was like, okay. So, if we're not going to play Backjack, then let's cut the Rhino. So, that opened up three slots. Which I replaced one of them with an extra BA name, and then you'll see a few. You'll see a few more of the changes later on. So now we got some hand traps. The last monsters here, three Ash Blossom. Of course, the um, this deck is like I know the the combo version of this deck is has a heavy hand trap lineup, but I personally don't like the heavy combo version because um, if they do stop your plays with your BAs, you don't have any back row to fall on. I mean, yes, you have hand traps, but a lot of hand traps don't like a lot of the, the high impact hand traps don't really go too well with this deck. Like running Gamma and Nibiru is not really that good in this deck because they they uh, interfere with the BAs because they're not BAs, you know. So you can't really run the high impact ones as well that well, and so that's why I was like, I don't like the combo version of the of this deck. So I'm running three ashes. It's like the only monster hand trap I'm running. And then for the one spell card, running one call by the grave, something else I added into the deck. It's a it's a flat one, and if you happen to open it with tour guide, it's like amazing. So I was like, why not run it? And it, it's also a good interruption, like for your opponent. Um, it, it, it's almost it can almost function like a hand trap itself. So I think that's really really good. And even though it's at one, I still think it's fine running it if you have the space for it, which I did. So yeah, uh, like I said, it's good going first if you have tour guide in hand and lets your plays go through. And it's, it's even good going second because if you want to try to, you know, make a board or whatever and your opponent has, a, they happen to have a hand trap like in their hand anyways, but that could be one of their interruptions. You can still use it going second. And then now going into the rest of the cards are all traps. So we got triple solemn strike the honestly one of the best cards the best traps in the, in the format right now it's just a very good it's almost like a it's just like the version of gamma because i mean yeah it's not as good going first but it's still fine like um i mean sorry it's not good as good going second sorry going first it's really really good because you said it and then it's an interruption on your opponent's turn but going second is not as bad as you think just because you can set up your board and i mean this deck doesn't really um have like crazy monsters on the board so when you have some back row there 
Um, you can just wait for your opponent to use an effect or special summon a monster, and there you go. Solemn Strike. Um, not only does it destroy, but it also, or negate, but it also destroys. So I think it's a very good card to have. And this is a card I added back into the deck from a couple of months ago. I, I put Imprint back into the deck, just because I think Imprint's going to come back into the format. Um, with uh, with a lot of the combo decks rising back up, like Dinos, like uh, uh, Dragon Link, and then Virtual World is also relatively, uh, it's mostly a combo based deck. So Infinite Permanence is going to, I feel, be a good in, good in the format again. And this card is just, it's a hand trap basically. So uh, you can use it going first or second, which is why I think it's so good. And in this version, of, or in this trap variant of the deck, of course, I decided to put it back in. And then we got Triple Torrential. Just a blowout card against a lot of decks. Wipes the whole board. It's good going first or even second, to be honest. Um, as long as like decks don't have like crazy back row removal. But most people don't put in back row removal game one. So this, is, this card will still be live, like whether you're going first or second. So it's most it's three of the more impactful traps. And the last three of is uh, I put in I put back in Dynamiscus. The only thing that sucks about this card is that it targets. That's like the only thing that sucks. But there's not very many. Mo I mean, there are some monsters, but like Dragoon that can be targeted. But a lot of times you can just use this card before they bring out the big monster. So this card, I mean, it's it gets your BAs in, in grave like from your hand if you have them to pop the trigger their effects. It banishes and it recurs itself like by when it's in the graveyard you can and you activate a trap or someone activates a trap you can bring it back as a monster helps you link climb so i thought it, it was a very versatile trap card and i was like why not so and also this also helps get rid of it's not just monsters it gets rid of any card so you can banish like if a field spell like mystic minds on the field or something like that or decks that rely a lot on their field spell really good and I guess another good thing is that it it targets for cost. It doesn't discard for cost. So if they negate it, you don't have to discard if you don't want to. Or you don't have to discard. Then now the next few cards are the two ofs. We got two Ice Dragons Prison. Uh, I needed more space in the deck. So I feel like just the other traps right now are a bit more impactful than Ice Dragons Prison. So that's why I decided to cut the card at two. I was running it at three before. But I wasn't running Dynamiscus so, or Imperm. So I was like... I could afford to run three, but now with more space needed, I thought, I feel like Ice Dragon's Prison is, um, it's a good card. It's definitely still a good card, but I just feel like it's a little bit less impactful than the other cards in the deck. And I don't like how this card is, can be negated with Bell. Like, that's, that's so not, like, it's happened a few times where I've, where I, because I've been, this is the deck I've been playing most of the time. Um. And the deck, it's happened quite a bit where this card gets negated by Bell, and I'm just like, ugh, it sucks. So that's why I feel like it's just, it's still impactful, but it's, uh, it's punishable. Like, so yeah, I just that's why I'm just running two of it. Then we got two Fiend Griefing. I mean, it's this card is just good graveyard interruption, gets your BAs in the grave. Yes, it's not as good going um, second, but it's still like I said, a lot of decks don't really have back or removal game one so i feel like having this card is still good and yeah it's just it's just a solid card in bas to be honest and the last card two trap trick um i was running three before but i cut it back down to two just because i needed a bit more space for like the better traps and like i said i've always been a fan of two just because um you don't want to draw multiples of this card because you, the effect of after you activate trap you can only resolve one trap after that. So it's like if you draw two, it's like one of them is basically dead. So yeah, I think two is fine, and I really wanted to keep the build at forty. So yeah, that's so that's basically it, guys, for the main deck. Um, now let's go into the extra deck. So we got of course the one Beatrice. I mean, it's burning abyss. Got to run Beatrice. We got Triple Dante. So because this is the trap version, um, and this deck focuses a lot, definitely a lot, on grinding out your opponent, I do feel like 
it's come up where I do need triple Dante. But yeah, that's why I'm running at three. But if I was playing the combo version, I would probably only play two. Just because the combo version does try to OTK more. I mean, it is a combo version. And they don't have traps to really grind out the game. So I don't feel like you would need three Dante in the combo version. But in this version, I feel like it's worth running three. Plus, I mean, I just like having the, the playset no Dante's. Looks super cool. And the one downward, that helps you climb into Zeus. So when you have, like, if you use... If you bring back Dante from the grave with Seer, it has no materials, so when you attack, you can go downward and Zeus, so you can use Zeus effect. The one Zeus. Um, if I was playing, again, the combo version, I would probably be cut the one, like I said, the one Dante for a second Zeus. But I do, I mean, I, I think I should probably still run two in this version, too. I just don't have a second Zeus. But I think one is definitely still, like, as long as you can give your hands on one, that's fine. That's that's good enough, honestly. Cause just this card applies so much pressure in the game, and it's just very very good. So yeah, you can win games. Going to the links, we got one access code talker. I mean, this card is pretty easy to summon in this deck. So and it's really great for OTKs. So why not? Oral sword. Uh, another another card that's very good for OTKs, and it's not that hard to summon in this deck either. So, because if you can, you should go for game. I mean, yeah, if you can, you should go for game. And then we got the Nightmare Package, Unicorn, Phoenix, and Cerberus. Just good cards to go into with IP, and yeah, and helps you link climb as well. So. And then we got. The one IP, of course, it's uh, part of one of the combos, basically, or like part of the main combo. So I meant to say. So yeah, IP super good. And the one Cherubini, I mean Cherubini is just amazing to, to basically. This card is what facilitates your OTKs. So yeah, Cherubini definitely is a must in my opinion. One Gravity Controller. It's another one of the cards that you need just in case like you open up Seer. And a random BA name, so you can go to Gravity Control and then still go into Beatrice. And last but not least, the Purple Dante. It doesn't come up as often now that I feel like BA is becoming a little more prevalent again, but I just I just think it's good to have just in case it does come up, you know. And I, I really like it. It's it, if you can summon this card, like you're most likely gonna win the game. It's just so good, can be targeted and lets you draw and then when it leaves the field you can i think discard a random card from your opponent's hand it's like that's so good yeah so that's that's about it for the deck i guess i can't quickly show the side that i'm running for now so i'm running triple lancia um that's just against good against like a lot of the meta decks like dinos dragon link um, virtual world, so I think it's a, a hand trap that covers a lot of decks. For the back row removal, we're running one Harpies, Feather Duster, along with three Twin Twister. Um, I mean, like I said with Dynamiscus, like, same applies to Twin Twister. You can discard the BAs to get their effects, and you get to pop cards on the field, so that's pretty good. And that's it for the Monsters and Spells, and for the trap cards, I'm running triple evenly matched i mean it's a card that goes well with trap trick as well so why not run it in this trap version and it's really good going second uh, it's good actually in this deck it's good going first or second because like i said you have trap trick or if you, you can just set it or whatever so really good stuff um then we got two judgment and one ice dragon's prison the, the third one i guess so these three cards are like my the cards that i would add into the deck if i'm going first like if if I lose game one, whatever, and I know I'm going to go first, then I would add in these three cards. Just so it helps out with, like I said, going first. Because, of course, Judgment is just so good. Uh, I, I might even just, I mean, I might even say just three Judgment instead of two and one. But for now, I'm just doing see, testing this out, see how it works. But yeah, that's it, guys, for the, extra, uh, the side deck. So that's, that basically covers my whole Burning Abyss. I hope you guys enjoyed. 
leave a like and subscribe if you did and expect the, uh, the Dragon Link video to come out in the next couple of days and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.